Hi, this is Rick Kearney at Earl Stewart Toyota, and we're talking about cars. Another important system is called the cooling system. Antifreeze, to those of you of the old school. It's a very simple setup again. A radiator up front where hot coolant is pumped into, the air blowing across the front of it and being drawn across by the cooling fans cools that radiator down. It takes the heat out of that coolant. The coolant is then pumped through the engine to help absorb heat from the engine and run back through the radiator to be cooled down again. There are several components to the system, however. The water pump that actually pumps the coolant through the entire system. A thermostat to help control the flow of it depending on the temperature of the coolant. The radiator, the hoses, the reservoir, and of course the radiator cap. Bear in mind, if that radiator cap is hot, do not open it. You can be very badly burned. Feel the upper radiator hose. If it's hot and you can't hold your hand on it, don't open that cap. If you squeeze it and it seems very hard, again, don't open that cap. It means it's under pressure. One of the easiest things you can do to inspect this system yourself is look at the level of coolant in the reservoir. If it's low, you might have a leak. You'll want to add some fluid, antifreeze, or even just plain water, and have your system pressure tested to make sure that you don't have a leak somewhere that's going to leave you stuck by the side of the road with a blown up engine. On older cars, the antifreeze was good for around 30 to 40,000 miles. Then it was recommended to drain it out, flush the system, and add in fresh new antifreeze. The reason for this is it actually lubricates the cooling system, the water pump, and the thermostat. On newer cars, however, the antifreeze lasts a lot longer. On my truck here, it's recommended to change it for the first time at 100,000 miles. However, that doesn't mean that I shouldn't be checking the level every time I do an oil change, and possibly even more often, just to make sure I don't have something leaking. Obviously, that radiator right up in front of the car can very easily be hit by road debris or something else that might puncture it. Rubber hoses can develop leaks. So take a look underneath your car. If you see a puddle, look closely at the color. If it's green or pink or even blue or purple, depending upon the color of the antifreeze that's in your car, you might have a leak in your cooling system. Now, obviously, as you're driving along, you should be checking your gauges on your dash quite often. However, some cars don't have a coolant temperature gauge anymore. If yours does, just take a glance at it every so often. If it starts to climb up to the hot range, pull over as soon as you safely can. Don't panic, just get to the side of the road as soon as you can. It's a good idea to have it checked very quickly afterwards. And again, don't open that radiator unless it's ice cube cold. If your car does not have a temperature gauge, you'll see a little temperature light, an idiot light. Basically, it might look like a thermometer, or it might even say hot, meaning your engine is overheating. Again, pull over as soon as you safely can. Do it quickly, because an overheating engine can be very expensive. It'll cause a lot of damage very quickly.